Hey everybody, welcome back to our Noonday Prayer Service. Uh, our service always begins on page 103. It's the order of service for Noonday. So let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Short reading from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, our reading today is uh, from Acts chapter 2. And it's a familiar verse that you've, you've probably heard before. It's verses 42 to 47. The fellowship of believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Well, the reason that I, I want to talk about this verse today is um, because I'd like to talk a little bit with you about community, Christian community, um, and the immense value that it is for us. Remember, I've been doing this like little teeny series on uh, how we might endure in the face of these strange times, the coronavirus outbreak. And so I've talked about a variety of topics, and today I want to touch into community. And the, the uh, sense that we get of community from Acts, I think, is a little challenging for a lot of us who uh, grew up as Episcopalians and were kind of more, um, more habitually acquainted with thinking about Christian community as just showing up for church. And, and I think that's really good. I, I can't imagine living out the Christian faith without this sense of um, just showing up being such an important part of the expression of our, our faith and our worship and our communal life. But this vision of Christian community that's presented in, in Acts is, is somewhat different. You notice it, it focuses so much on how um, they spend time together in their homes, how they're breaking bread together, how they're praying with one another regularly. It's this um, intensely intimate uh, vision of Christian community. And I think that the, the thing we're called to envision when we read a passage like this is to recognize that we need this. That it's not just that we show up to church, but it's also we, that we have these intensive groups, friendships, relationships that sustain us. And so if you have that kind of relationship with someone or a group of people, and you want to endure during this time of uh, strange sort of social distancing, I would encourage you to commit to those relationships in whatever way that you can, whether that's through regularly talking on the phone, it's through emailing or texting, whatever it is, meet with the people who you can pray with and pray for and live together with and share what's on your heart. You will need that in order to sustain a faith in a time that's severely challenging. So if you do have friendships like that, my point is, don't think of those as sort of additional good qualities of being a Christian, but envision those relationships as essential and actually kind of permanent. So if you have a friend who you're willing to pray with, think of that particular friend as a permanent relationship in your life. Don't let them go. Be a friend who sticks it out almost like a kind of marriage. And now if you don't have friends like that, you might have acquaintances at church or 
Um, maybe you have friends from work, but you don't have strong relationships with other Christians. Find some. I, I know that sounds sort of uh, point blank and blunt, but I would encourage you, if you are hoping to endure during a period of really strange, challenging circumstances, you need to find a friend who you can stick it out with and pray with and share your life with. And if, if you are wondering how to do that, you, you can reach out to any of us on staff at the church. We would love to plug you into some kind of small group or um, plug you into the church in, in any way. But you will need that kind of friendship if you want to endure. Finally, I think it can be tempting sometimes to read about these intense communities that uh, Scripture shows us, particularly in the book of, a- book of Acts, and think, man, it kind of seems insular. It's kind of like a holy huddle, you know, everybody's all together. But remember that the last verse of this reading was this. As they were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The point of Christian community isn't so you can sequester off and just enjoy one another. The point is that you can bless others. This is exactly what we see in Acts. So my admonition for you is to actually think of your neighbor as that uh, is bringing them in to the Christian community that you benefit from. Don't think of your Christian community as just for you, but think of it for the sake of others, particularly your neighbor. C.S. Lewis once said that the most sacred thing that you encounter aside from the Eucharist every week is your neighbor. So if you have a neighbor that you don't know or you have a neighbor who you aren't all that close with, please, please reach out to them. Get to know their families. Get to know their names. Get to know what they enjoy. Treat them as sacred and try to bring them into uh, the benefits of a Christian community that, that you already have. So that's my admonition for us today. If you are hoping to endure during a time that is challenging, turn, cling to, uh, hope in the relationships that God has given you, and uh, do it again and again. So our service uh, continues on page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray the prayer our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful that you gather us together to be a community of believers who can bless one another. I pray for all of those at St. George's who are in relationships that are uh, nourishing and valuable and um, given to them by you. And I ask that you would give them um, an, an intensive desire to commit to one another in these friendships. Lord, I also pray for those who don't have those kinds of friendships yet. I pray that we could uh, be those for them. Lord, I also pray for all of our neighbors, our literal neighbors who live next door. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, open their hearts and that you would give us the ability to reach out to them uh, with truth and love and sincerity. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.